When EA Games acquired DICE in 2004, the developer was best known for their award-winning Battlefield series on the PC. After what became a series of over six iterations, DICE finally announced that they were hard at work at something different. What became of that announcement was this piece of software, Mirror's Edge. And different it is. This is no Battlefield game. In fact, it's easy to say that this game separates itself from nearly every other in the industry. Mirror's Edge is a free-running game, known as Parkour in French. And while certain games have already touched upon the free-running concept, Mirror's Edge completely envelops it and presents it in an engulfing first-person view. Play as a runner named Faith. The world is now a highly controlled place, with the government and police having completely taken over the lives of citizens. Runners spend their time delivering important packages behind the government's back, staying out of sight on city rooftops. But when Faith's sister, a cop herself, is framed for murder, trouble begins to surround both girls, and Faith must investigate behind the scenes to clear her sister's name and eventually save her life. And from there, the story unfolds into an ugly plot full of conspiracy and deceit. The game consists of a lot of running, and I mean a lot. You'll be running from the police for most of the game, as you race through environments from rooftops to subways trying to avoid capture. There is the odd chase mission, in which you chase somebody else, but the game is almost full of running away, which can tend to get old. Uh, well, I'm not so sure I agree with that. The adrenaline that you get from the running missions makes for an incredible experience. And I think a lot of it is thanks to the perspective. And not to mention the fact that you're sliding. On her way. Get your ass ready to move. Jumping. Wall running. Swinging. rolling away as you escape from the enemy. It isn't all just about running. Yeah, but you do so much of that that it does get old. I mean, it's cool for the first few missions, but when you realize the game is entirely like that as you progress, it'll start to feel like maybe a little more gameplay variety should have been implemented. You're taking your sweet old time, so let's get pissed. She's almost at the comms tower and you ain't. Get moving and give her the bag. Alright, I'll give you that the game is pretty much the same throughout its entire length. But I think the variety in environment and scenarios refresh the feeling of wanting to run. It sounds silly, but <laughs> running away is just really fun in this game. You just want to keep running forever if you can. And that's why the possible repetitiveness that some players might feel did not bother me first. to say that the developer didn't try to include variety in the gameplay. There is mainly combat, and even gunslinging aspects of the game. However, both also get repetitive and aren't that well. Okay, I'll give you that the combat and shooting aspects of the game aren't its high points, but that was also part of the game's design. The developer wanted to include variety, yeah, but they also clearly didn't want players spending their time shooting. For example, the guns only have about 8 bullets each after you acquire them, which, by the way, is in awesome fashion. Further, you can't run or perform parkour moves with most guns in hand. There's even an unlockable achievement for the 360 version and a trophy for the PS3 one for players who go through the entire game without shooting anybody. The game is about free running, and the developer makes you aware of that through its design. I'll agree that the combat is pretty cool, despite its repetitive nature. I also enjoy how the game clearly tells you that you can only battle one enemy at a time, where in a lot of other games, engaging with a single enemy will have others around you waiting to fight you over. The enemies in this game are not as forgiving. Taking on multiple enemies at once is just asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. And the controls in this game are fantastic. It feels really smooth to run around the city and perform all the moves at your disposal. 
I have absolutely no complaints about the controls using the Xbox 360 pad. The running controls are excellent. Dice really pulled it off. However, the aiming doesn't work as well when you're shooting. <laughs> well, yeah, but... I know, I know. The shooting from the front is more natural than the game. It's still there. Otherwise, though, the control's great. And what about those visuals? The first time I saw Mirror's Edge in motion a few months ago, it's from the trailer. I was in awe at the style. Fast forward to today, and it looks even better. The use of bright colors to paint the city as opposed to the dirty and really like that kind of things go for nowadays. It's very refreshing. They're trying to cut you off the head, face. Get through them, quick. Colors even play a role in the gameplay design. Dice invented runner vision to help point gamers in the right direction as they play. As you run, objects that you should be interacting with next turn red, which guides you as you go through the levels. Runner vision is a great idea in a game like this, though the game is a bit linear regardless. Having runner vision on gives the player great feedback on the next path to take, especially handy while running away from the armed enemies. And for the keeners out there, the developer gives the option to turn runner vision off, which in my opinion makes the game more fun as you try and find paths on your own. Absolutely. Going through the game and memorizing paths without a guide is even more deadly. That's not to say that runner vision hurts the design, but for the hardcore out there wanting to find the things alone, the option to turn it off is the other side to get down. Yeah. And to top off the game's stunning look, the game features no HUD apart from an aiming reticle in the middle of the screen. It's a very clean looking game overall. Blue's up ahead. Be careful. Alright, well to top it off, I absolutely love this game. It presents a new concept and delivers it with flying colors. It looks great, it plays real smooth, and I can't wait for another game using the engine. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. What about you, Mike? I like the game too, but it was short, some repetitive, and some aspects of the game could be improved. It felt more like an extended tech demo than a full game. But now that the engine is built, I hope the next installment fixes all the issues, because I really like the concept of hardcore in first person. I'll give it a 7.0 out of 10. 